Greetings, adventurers. My name is Kramer, and welcome to the new weekly series we're doing here on the channel called Cooking Anachronism. Now, most of us aren't going to have historically accurate ovens and kitchens to work with, but what we can do is enjoy some nice medievally sourced and fantasy themed foods in the comforts of our own home. So that is the purpose of these videos. And the first thing we're going to be doing is making black bread from the unofficially licensed Feast of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones cookbook. All of the ingredients that we'll be using today, as well as the link to the book itself, are going to be linked down in the description box below. So the first thing I need to do, obviously, is put on an apron so I don't get my nice clothing dirty. The first step is to add two tablespoons of honey. I'm using uh, Texas wildflower honey, but I assume anything will work, along with some yeast and 12 ounces of a dark beer or stout into a bowl. Now we're gonna let that rest for five minutes. Now this is a little tip from Gordon Ramsay that I learned is I have pre-oiled my spoon so that the honey doesn't stick to the inside of it. I just used olive oil, but that's gonna go right in. Let's see if that works. Wow, perfect. Gordon Ramsay strikes again. Each of these bottles is only 11.2 uh, ounces. We needed 12, so the rest of this bottle is for me. Now we're going to add the yeast and let that sit for five minutes. It didn't really say whether or not to stir that, so um, I did and we'll see what happens. While we're waiting for that to do its thing, we're going to beat one egg. Okay, the next step is to add that egg with two tablespoons of kosher salt. I don't really know why it has to be kosher. It might not really matter that much. And then we're going to add three types of flour, two cups, of regular all-purpose white flour, two cups of the rye flour, and half of a cup of whole wheat flour. So after all of the flour has been added, we're going to get it until it's one big lump, and then we're going to take it out of the bowl and knead it. And then after that, we get to let it sit for an hour. So we've now let the bread rise for about an hour. It hasn't risen a whole lot, but I don't really know how much I should expect it to rise. It now says to punch the bread down. I don't know if that means like just once um, or a couple times. So I'm, I'm gonna knead it a little bit more and then we're gonna let it sit overnight. That looks like bread. So it's day two and this has been sitting overnight and it's actually risen quite a bit here. The next step is that this is supposed to make two loaves of bread. So we're gonna take it out of this bowl. We're gonna cut it in half. While we are doing this, we can preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And after we have formed our two gentle loaves, we're going to cut some sort of design in the top. It doesn't really matter. The main purpose is to keep the bread from rising too high. And then we're going to lightly flour both of the loaves as well as our pan to keep them from sticking. And we're going to stick them into the oven, again, heated at 450 degrees for 30 minutes or until the crust is golden brown. And then they're ready to come out. After they come out, we must let them sit for 15 minutes roughly to cool down and let the crumbs set, and then they are ready to eat. Now, some of you I know might be saying from watching this video, Kramer, it is evident that you have never baked bread before without adult supervision. And you'd be correct on the one hand. And on the other hand, um, it is bread that I made. So let's go ahead and give it a little taste test here. Wow. Is it weird to say that I'm impressed with myself? I think maybe I used a little bit too much salt actually, but it does have that sourdough taste. It's nice, it's salty, the crust on the outside is nice and crispy and it's very, it's very soft on the inside. This would be fantastic to use with the soup. So I'm very excited to uh, to maybe make some soup to have with this. Be really good with butter too, I'm going to guess. 
It's a very dense crumb, but it does have a crumb to it. It's, it's, it's very nice. Definitely different than uh, the sorts of flatbreads that I'm used to making like in a pan, like those journey cakes um, or cram. Definitely much better than that. So thank you for joining me here today as we went on this little bread making experiment. As always, the goal here is to inspire you to do something. If your talent level is way above mine for making bread, that's fantastic. Go make bread. If your talent level is way below mine and you've never made bread before either, then, then just give it a try. Again, if it's simple enough that I can figure it out, then you can figure it out too. And this is really a way for us to just get a nice immersive little moment here as we're tasting something that people in our favorite fantasy worlds may have tasted. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, good luck on your adventures.